Today's lesson is on the fundamental counting principle. So suppose when you woke up this morning you realized that you only had two clean pairs of pants, one black and one blue, and three clean shirts, a red, a yellow, and a green to pick from. How many different ways could you get dressed today? So what we're going to do is build a tree diagram. So first you have the person at the top. The person has two choices for pants, black and blue. So if I have a black pair of pants, here I'm going to shade this in, so these are my black pants, and I have a pair of blue pants. So, so far with just the pants, I only have two choices. But depending on which pair of pants I choose, I could then choose one of three shirts. Okay, so let's say I chose the black pair of pants. Well, if I chose a black pair of pants, then I could also choose a red shirt or I could choose a yellow shirt or I could choose a green shirt. So that's three different choices given that I have black pants. Now let's go back and think about what if I chose blue pants this morning. Well if I chose blue pants then I could also have red, a uh, red shirt or a yellow shirt or a green shirt. So therefore there are six different w outfit combinations that we could choose from. Black red, black yellow, black green, blue red, blue yellow, blue green. This method of counting is called a tree diagram. It's because we have like this kind of like a root system or branches. You have a trunk and then branches or you have a trunk and then roots. Um, but as you're breaking up um, your choices, you can see that there are exactly six choices that you can make. Now an easier method might be just to simply multiply the number of choices that you have for the pants and the number of choices you have for the shirts. So uh, for the pants we have two choices, red, uh, black or blue. Okay, And if we multiply that by the number of choices we have for the shirts, well we have three choices, red, yellow, and green. So if we take three times two, that's going to get us six, which is the same number of choices we came up with the tree diagram. Now the tree diagram is awesome. It's a very visual way of seeing this, but when you have answers that are larger than six, you're not really going to want to draw several different pairs of pants and several different pairs of shirts. And what if we added jewelry and shoes and socks and um, how you're going to do your hair and uh, a tie? Or, there's so many other choices. And so I don't really want to draw all the ties that you could possibly wear. And so we're going to use um, the fundamental counting principle, which just tells you to multiply. So the fundamental counting principle states that the number of ways in which a series of successive things occur is found by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. Now I know that's a lot of words and it might be a little confusing, but it's just like the pants and the shirts. Two options for your pants times three options for your shirts, multiply it, and that's how you get the total number of options. So let's go through some examples. The first example is a restaurant offers 10 appetizers and 15 main courses. How many ways can you order a two course meal? The two courses are first appetizers and the second one is main. So if I have just these two courses, how many different ways could I have appetizers? Well, I could have 10 different ways. And I'm going to multiply that by the number of main courses. Well, that's just 15. So if I need to use my calculator, I can do that 10 times 15, but a lot of us could probably do that in our head and get 150 choices. There's 150 different ways you can order your two course meal. All right, let's do one that's a little bit trickier. A car model comes in 11 different colors, with or without air conditioning, with or without a sunroof, automatic or stick shift, and with or without anti-lock brakes. In how many different ways um, can the car be ordered regarding to these options? 
Okay, so every time there's a new option, we have a new multiplier. So the first option we're talking about is color. The next option is with or without AC. Okay, the next option we have is with or without a sunroof. And then we have automatic or, or stick shift. Um, we'll say engine. And then the last one is anti-lock brakes. Okay, so let's go back. How many different ways could we have colors? Well, we have 11 different colors for this one. For the AC, with or without, there's only two choices. Either you're going to have AC or you're not going to have AC. Uh, for the sunroof, either you're going to have a sunroof or you're not. So there's only two choices. Automatic or stick shift, again, only two choices. And then with or without anti-lag brakes, again, two choices. So I'm going to use my calculator. I have 11 times 2 times another 2 times another 2 times another 2. That turns out to be 176 different ways that we could order our car um, for this particular model. The next question says, how many three-digit even numbers are there? Assume that zero cannot be in the leftmost position. So how many digits do we have? We only have a three-digit number. So we have the hundreds place, the tens place, and the ones place. All right, so we have different choices we could have here. So um, on the hundreds place, it says assume that zero cannot be in the leftmost position. If there was a zero here, then it wouldn't be a three-digit number, would it? It would only be a two-digit number. So we can't have zero. How many other digits could we have? We could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. We just can't have zero, okay? So how many digits? Nine for the first one. How many digits could be in the tens place for this to be a three-digit even number? Hmm. Well, evens, even numbers only matter in the ones place. So all ten digits would be okay for the tens place. So there's ten total digits there. Now the ones place, that one's a little bit trickier. Even numbers are like 4 or 16 or 132. Even is if the ones digit is an even digit, then the whole thing's an even digit. Even if the tens is a odd digit, that's okay. As long as the ones digit is even, then the whole thing's even. Now what are the even digits? 2, 4, 6, 8, and there's one more, 0. 0 is considered even. So we have five different digits we could have there. So nine different digits for the 100 spot, 10 different digits for the 10 spot, and 5 for the 1's position. So I'm going to come over to my calculator and take 9 times 10 times 5, and that's going to get me 450 different three-digit even numbers. Okay, suppose we're taking a multiple choice test that has eight questions. Each question has three answer choices with only one correct choice per question. If you select one choice for each question, how many different ways could you answer the questions? Now we're not talking about right or wrong, we're just answering the questions. So how many total questions do I have? Well, it looks like I have eight total questions. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different questions. Now each question has three answer choices. So on my first question, how many different ways could I answer it? Well either A, B, or C, right? So there's three different ways you could answer it. Um, let's see, for the next question, how many different ways could you answer that question? Well also three, because there's only three choices. Again we don't really, we're not talking about which one's correct or not, I'm just saying how many different ways could we answer it? So each of these questions has the same number of answer choices, three. So we have three times three times three, eight times. A short way of writing that would be three to the eighth. And when we get that in our calculator, I can use the three as our base and then caret eight and then hit enter. 
and that's going to get me 6,000 561 different ways that you could randomly answer these uh, choices. So there's only one correct answer for each slot, so you better know your stuff uh, for multiple choice questions. I know a lot of students are like, oh, I like multiple choice answers better because the answer is there. But there's a lot of different ways you could answer this. Um, so I actually prefer open-ended questions because then I can uh, at least give you partial credit. Now, if you didn't want to do 3 to the 8th, you could do 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 8 times. And it's still going to be 6,561. And this concludes our lesson on the fundamental counting principle.